So one of the things I've been meaning to do for a while is uh, test the uh, free Pascal support for uh, the stroked fonts that come with uh, Borland's Turbo Pascal. It's it supports this, but it doesn't include any fonts with any of the distribution. So if you wrote a program like this, like I have right here, uh, this should normally work um, because the uh, free Pascal graph library doesn't need uh, delocation for the Borland graphic interface drivers. Uh, so you don't have to specify the, uh, the third option here. But let's see what happens when we try to compile this and, and run this is that we get an error here. And that's because it's failing to load the, the font. So this third option here, which you normally don't use, you actually have to specify the font location. So in my case, I'm gonna use my Turbo Pascal 7 font location, which will be E DOS box TP7, and it'll be in the BGI folder. So let me bring that up here. So you can see this is the uh, the folder here. Let me just click on it. Same path. And here's all the files uh, along with the uh, BGI files. We're only interested in the font files, the ones with, that end with the CHR. These are stroked fonts, uh, not as good as true type fonts, but they are scalable. So now if we go back and rerun this program, same program, except now we have the correct path, we can see that it actually works. So it free Pascal does support this, but I don't think enough information is given to give you an idea of how you should make it work. Now, we could even do more. Let's say we didn't want to include uh, the uh, stroke font as a separate file, we wanted to link it into our executable. Well, there, there is a way to do that. In Turbo Pascal, there's a utility to convert it to an object file and then link that. Well, there's something similar in Free Pascal, and let me jump to the command line here. And so we have a utility called bin to obj. This is similar to the Turbo Pascal utility, but this doesn't actually create an object file. This creates and include file. So if we specify everything here, uh, so the dash C is the constant name we're gonna give it. The dash O is the file name. So I'm gonna call it goth.inc. And let's execute that. It worked, it didn't give us any error messages. So let's load this up so we can see how it looks like. So we call it goth.inc. And so here it is. It's an array with a just a, a bunch of bytes basically representing representing what was in the uh, the file. It's rather big. So let's switch out of here. And what we can do now is come here, do dollar sign i for include goth dot inc, and this will include that whole constant array in our program. And what we can do now is we don't have to specify the path. We can remove all this. And what we can do now is do what's called register BGI font. And so we give it the address of our constant array, which is uh, goth. And uh, this should work if we just change this right here to my font. So let's try the same thing again. This time we're not loading it through the file. And here it is again. So that's how you include the actual font into your EXE program. So this eliminates the need to have a folder full of these uh, CHR files. Now, how about if you wanted to create your own font? Well, there's a, a DOS font editor that Borland put out, but I'm not sure how good it is. The uh, 
the one I downloaded it seems to come with uh, some additional files indicating that it corrupts files and and provides some methods to fix it, but I haven't run across the uh, the corruption. So I'm going to run it without uh, that fix. And so here's the uh, the font file I created just to see if it works. I created a few characters here. They don't even match up with the letters, but just to test out to see if I can really create my own stroke fonts here. And so let's go back to our program here and uh, see if we can use this. Uh, so what we have to do is use the install user font and uh, specify the file name, but without the .chr extension. And we have to go back here and include the location of where that file is. So we have to go back in put our location here, TP7 and BGI. I made a copy and put it in this folder. So if, if you're wondering why it doesn't match up the folder name and let's comment this back in again. And so we have my font equal install user font K. And uh, so now, because I didn't define all the letters, I'm just going to print or display only the fonts I created. So let's see if we can uh, display our own font here. So here's that uh, terrible A I created. Let's go back into the... Uh, so it matches up. That's what I created and that's what we're displaying in our own program. Let me put this aside here. Let's try the other character. And here we go. And let's see. So there it is in the font editor. And so it, it seems to work. I haven't had any problems, but I only defined a few characters. So it may corrupt files as they get bigger. Uh, but it seems to work for me. Now the strange thing is I tried loading the uh, the user font in Turbo Pascal and it didn't work for me. So I don't know why, but uh, it works in Free Pascal, but it doesn't work in Turbo Pascal. So that's all I got uh, for this video. Uh, I will include the, uh, the link to my GitHub with the actual demo program here and my uh, include file and the uh, CHR files, including the, uh, the demo one I created. Uh, now, it's perfectly fine for me or any uh, user who has a license for Turbo Pascal 7 to redistribute the uh, CHR files. So I'm not breaking any laws here. Not that Borland would care at this point, just in case you're wondering.